in this video, I'm going to go through transformations of shapes and I'm focusing on enlargement. So transforming, transforming a shape means changing it. This can be done by translation, reflection, rotation, or enlargement. So to enlarge a shape, um, you need to know the scale factor. This is the size of the enlargement. The scale factor can be a whole number, it can be an integer, or it can be a decimal or a fraction. So I'm asking the question, what is the scale factor used for each of these enlargements? To go from shape A to shape B. So I need to compare one of the sides. I'm going to compare the base. The base in A is 2. The base in B is 4 squares. So naturally, to get from A to B, I multiplied by 2. So the scale factor is 2. To get from A to C, I'm going to compare the base again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So to get from A to C, from 2 to 6, I multiply by 3. So the scale factor is 3. Naturally, if I want to uh, find the scale factor, I can divide the 6 by the 2 to get the 3, or I can divide the 4 by the 2 to get my scale factor of 2. So to get the scale factor, you could um, divide the bigger length by the smaller length. So let's have a look B to C. So from B to C, uh, B is 4 squares, C is 6. If you're not sure, if it's not uh, very straightforward, you would divide. So 6 divided by 4 is 3 over 2, which is 1.5. And the scale factor can be a decimal, as I said, or a fraction. They're equivalent. Now, the last question says, find the scale factor that takes you from B to A. B is 4 and A is 2. And you can see that going from B to A, the shape is getting smaller. It is still called an enlargement, but it's definitely not going to be a scale factor of 2 because when it was from A to B at a scale factor of 2, it got bigger. This one has halved from 4 to 2, it has halved. So the scale factor is a half or 0 0.5. So to get um, the scale factor, you are... So to get the scale factor, you are dividing um, the image, which is the new shape. Um, actually, let me write this, this underneath. So you're dividing the image by the original shape, the image being the new shape. So the first um, example says enlarge triangle ABC by a scale factor 2 from the center to 3. So firstly, the center is where you start the enlargement from. And it's very important. And it's often given as um, a coordinate. If it's not given as a coordinate, then they will mark it on the grid for you. So 2, 3, that's the center of enlargement. And what you need to do is to count always from the center of enlargement to each of the vertices um, and then enlarge. So I'm going to go from the center to A. So I'm going to call it, uh, let's call the center O. It's often called O. So that's the center and I'm calling that O. So from O to A. I have gone one step to the right and one 
step up. Now, you are welcome to write that as a vector, a column vector, one step up and one step to the right, or one to the right and one up. Or you can write it as one up, sorry, one to the right, one right, and one up. So I don't mind how you write it. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to count from O, always from the center. So from O to B. From O to B, I've moved one step to the right and then one, two steps down. So one step to the right and two steps down. One right, two down. And then I'm going to count again from the center, always, always from the center. That's your starting point from O to C. From O to C, I'm moving one, two, three steps to the right. And then I'm moving one, two steps down. So three right and two down. To enlarge from the center of enlargement means that I need to start from the center of enlargement and I need to double, because the scale factor is two, double these distances. So I'm going to multiply these distances by two. Times by two, times by two, times by two. Um, you don't times by two every time, you read the scale factor and it says the scale factor is two. So I always multiply by the scale factor because I'm increasing, I'm enlarging by the scale factor. So this gives me the new distances. So this is two to the right and two up. This is two to the right and four down. And this is going to be six to the right because of the three times the two and four down. And when you start counting these distances, you count from the center of enlargement. Everything starts at the center of enlargement. So I'm putting my pen on the O and I'm moving two steps to the right and two steps up and that gives me my A with a dash because that means this is the image. This is the new um, point A. And then I'm going to go back to the center again. So pen on the center and I'm moving two steps to the right and one, two, three, four steps down. And this gives me B dash, which is the image. And I go back to the center again, so your pen should be on the center, and you're moving one, two, three, four, five, six steps to the right, and one, two, three, four steps down, and this is C with a dash, which is the image. Now that I've got my three points, I am using the ruler, and I'm going to draw my new triangle, Now, if your um, questions don't have a labeled triangle or a named triangle ABC, I suggest that you um, label your triangle or your shapes, different letters, and that you do your workings on the side um, so that it's very clear at which points you've done, which points uh, you need to continue, especially if it's an L shape or something with um, a lot of vertices. Now you can see that this is an enlargement, it's definitely bigger. You can see that it has doubled because uh, this is one, two, three, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So the shape has definitely doubled. It doesn't matter that there's a little bit of an overlap. The overlap is because of where we started um, with the center of enlargement. So it's absolutely okay for these shapes to overlap. 
Of course, the other thing that they could ask you to do is to describe the transformation. They're not going to tell you whether it's an enlargement or a translation or a rotation. They're simply going to say, describe fully the single transformation, which maps um, one shape to the other. In this example, it's mapping shape P, the smaller one, to the bigger one. So you can see straight away that it's an enlargement. So to describe the enlargement, the first thing you need to do is actually say what the transformation is. So shape P has been enlarged. The second thing you need to say is the scale factor. And to do that, you need to compare one of the sides. So I'm going to uh, compare the base. This is one this is three squares, so the scale factor is three. Shape P has been enlarged by a scale factor three. Then you have to give the center of enlargement, and you have to give that as a coordinate if you are given a coordinate grid. So shape P has been enlarged by a scale factor of three. I now need to find the center of enlargement. And you do that by um, connecting each vertex with its image. So I'm going to color code them. These two are images of each other, so they need to be connected. These two are images of each other, they need to be connected. And those two are images of each other, they need to be connected highly recommend that you get a very thin uh, pen. I'm going to do that. And your ruler, you need to be very, very exact so that to, to get the right um, corner. So I'm going to connect those two, um, extend those lines as far as they would go on the grid from all directions. So those two are connected. I'm going to connect those two. Again, extend those lines as far as they would go on the grid. And then I'm going to connect the two blue ones. And I'm extending the line as far as it would go on the grid. I hope you notice that all three lines connect in this one point there and that is your center of enlargement if i take the x value of the coordinate that's a four and if i take the y value that's a three and so shape p has been enlarged by scale factor of three from the center or from the point And it's the point four three. And these are usually at three marks. They will give you a mark for correct transformation for the scale factor and for the center of enlargement.